Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Tuesday, August 14. The Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, is reporting a 16.8% reduction in major crimes. The latest crime stats are for the period January 1 to August 11, 2018. The most significant reduction is in aggravated assault, which declined by 22.8%. There were 16.8% fewer reports of murder, while shootings and rape both declined by approximately 15%. Also trending downward are robbery and break-in, however larceny went up by 12%. The JCF review for the period also revealed that 453 firearms and 7,247 rounds of ammunition were seized. This is in comparison to 520 firearms and 12,719 rounds of ammunition seized for the same period last year. The downward trend in major crimes reflects positively on the government's strategic security measures. The Passport Immigration and Citizenship Agency, PICA, will be putting more resources in place to deal with the increase in citizenship applications. PICA's Chief Executive Officer, Andrew Winter, says the agency receives an average of 3,000 to 4,000 applications per year. An application can take up to two years if all documents are accurate and cross-reference is successful. Mr. Winter says PICA is now reviewing the citizenship process to make the system faster where necessary. He was addressing the citizenship swearing-in ceremony for 32 persons on Thursday. PICA's CEO welcomed the successful applicants who have been living and working in Jamaica for some time. We look forward to you joining the fold to help us to build our great country with your continued contribution and commitment to Jamaica's growth and development. The new citizens are from countries such as Syria, Nigeria, India, Sri Lanka, Cuba, the United Kingdom, Suriname, Canada and Myanmar. Jamaican citizenship is granted through four categories, descendant, marriage, registration, and naturalization. Sixteen youth from the Housing Opportunity Production and Employment, HOPE, program are now on internship at the Jamaica Constabulary Force to gain valuable work experience. The group is the first cohort being placed at police stations in the St. Andrew North Division. During the one-year period, they will be engaged in the digitization of records and as customer service representatives. National Coordinator of the HOPE program, Colonel Martin Rickman, says the aim is to expose them to attitudes and personal development training skills and get them to serve in various industries across the island. What we're doing here is helping our people, young people in particular, to excel in their own lives. And by doing that, they are now a meaningful contributor to other um, to the development of the country as a whole. Colonel Rickman was speaking at the launch of the HOPE program Police Partnership for the St. Andrew North Division on Monday. Still on job placement, more than 600 youth ages 17 to 24 are being employed under the Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation KSAMC Youth Summer Employment Program. The four-week program started on Monday and will accommodate a possible two-week extension. Participants will be paid a weekly stipend of $8,500. Under the program, they will assist the municipal corporation with data collection and verification activities in areas such as trade license, street light, disaster vulnerability assessment, billboards and signs survey, as well as barber and hairdresser surveys. It's very important that you as summer employees part of this program because it's not just for you to be employed and earn a much needed stipend, but it's also that you begin to get an appreciation as students within the city, as residents within the city, that you begin to get an appreciation of the work of the municipal corporations, uh, of what we do as local government. Kingston's mayor was addressing the youth at an orientation session on Friday. The KSAMC Youth Summer Employment Program is part of a broader initiative of the Ministry of Local Government and Community Development. It seeks to train and empower youth within municipal communities across the 14 parishes. CAPE subjects are now being offered through the University of the Commonwealth Caribbean, UCC. This was confirmed by way of a partnership with the Caribbean Examination Council, CXC, recently. The aim is to increase the number of candidates accessing the certification, to improve their employment status and advance their entrepreneurial pursuits. 
Education State Minister Floyd Green says expanding access to CAPE subjects supports the ministry's drive for the full establishment of seven-year high schools. This will allow more students to continue their training through the traditional sixth form and the career advancement program, CAP. In the modern day world, just finishing high school with CXC subjects is not enough. It doesn't work anymore. And the world nowadays, they need people with skills and with certified skills. So the certification has become so valuable and you can't stop at secondary level. Minister Green was speaking at an information session hosted by UCC Kingston recently. And finally, services at the Stony Hill Health Center in St. Andrew have been transferred to the Golden Spring Health Center. The temporary measure is to accommodate expansion and renovation works being done at the facility. The Southeast Regional Health Authority, Sarah, says staff from the Stony Hill Health Center have been reassigned to the Golden Spring facility to address the possible increase of patients. Opening hours at the Golden Spring Health Center have also been extended to 8 p.m. on Mondays and Wednesdays. The Golden Spring Health Center, which was upgraded in 2015, offers services such as curative, maternal and child health, community mental health, nutrition, phlebotomy and pharmacy. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.